The time has come at long last to take a look at the fourth and final Tech 2 Marauder battleship. I've already covered the Golem, the Varga, and the Paladin, so now is the time to take a look at the Galente Federation's Kronos, take it out for a spin into a C5J space system, and rat a few core garrisons to see how it holds up. And oh boy, I was not expecting to enjoy this ship half as much as I ended up doing. Now I have a bit of a tradition, ask anyone in my corp, when I take a ship out for its maiden voyage, 90% of the time the ship does not make it back, and the Kronos, I'm glad to say, was no exception, and I lost this in a fairly hilarious little way. That said, I'd run a load of sites beforehand, I have bought the ship back and ran a few more after just to get footage and make sure that everything was working fine, but join me in this video as we take a look at the Galente Federation's Kronos. Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome back to another video for EVE Online. In today's video I'm going to be undocking the Galente Federation's Tech 2 Marauder battleship, the Kronos. We've already covered the Golem, the Varga and the Paladin, I do definitely have opinions on which of these I think is the better in inverted commas of the different Marauders, certainly for different aspects, different playstyles and that kind of thing, and I probably will do a little video looking at all four side by side just to give my thoughts and opinions on that but I was not expecting to enjoy the Kronos half as much as I actually did. This, spoiler alert, is a really fun ship for me to fly personally. I thoroughly enjoyed this, and as I alluded to in the opening to this, I did lose it in a fairly spectacular and hilarious way. It was not the way I intended a ship like this to go out. It wasn't what I was expecting to lose it to. It was definitely a learning moment for me. So what I'm going to do in this video then is run you through the Kronos itself. I'm going to talk about the fit that I'm using for core garrisons, and then I'm going to showcase it in action to show you how you can use this vessel to run these combat sites and make 250 million isk every 20 minutes. 750 million in an hour, theoretically. I think by time you're warping around though, you're going to be still getting close to about 500 million an hour, but still, what an excellent amount of isk per hour for a really really cool, really fun vessel to fly. If you do enjoy this video, please do spend that extra moment just to hit like on it, drop a comment down below to let me know what you think, it really helps the channel out, and if you do want to go the extra mile to help support content like this, keep me making these kind of videos, then you can head to my Patreon page, my PayPal tip jar, and my Redbubble merchandise store, some new designs coming soon as soon as I get time to actually sit down and draft some up. Finally, if you're fairly new to EVE Online, though if you're watching a Marauder video, hey, maybe it's aspirational, I don't know, there is a referral link in the description down below. You can click log into your account and it will drop 1 million free skill points onto your account. I do get a little bit of a kickback from that, but a million free skill points is nothing to be sniffed at and anyone can use this no matter how old your account is, as long as you have not used a referral link already. So get on that. And while you're down there, come join the Catskull Community Discord. We'd love to chat with you, love to talk about EVE Online, and if you want to apply to the Catskull Corporation, join us in wormholes, or even just join us in our high sec station and start learning the game, come apply there, we would love to have you. Anyway, all that said and done then, let's jump right into talking about the Galente Federation's Tech 2 Marauder battleship, the Kronos. First of all then, let's actually talk about the Kronos in specific, the ship and the hull itself. Now, Galente Federation ships tend to be named after ancient Greek things. Sometimes it's mythology, sometimes it's Greek warfare, there's a lot of cool stuff going on in there if you're a bit of a classical history buff, and the Kronos is certainly no exception. Now in ancient Greek religion and mythology, Kronos was the leader and youngest of the first generation of the Titans, the divine descendants of the primordial Gaia, Mother Earth, and Uranus, Father Sky. He overthrew his father and ruled during the mythological Golden Age until he was overthrown by his own son Zeus and imprisoned in Tartarus. Yeah, we've got a lot of very powerful connotations going on with the name alone. And it should be worth noting as well that the Megathron hull is absolutely one of my favourite looking battleships in the game. It's one of the few Galente ships that I do really, really like. It's such a pretty hull, it looks really powerful, it fits the name really well, and boy, when the Bastion module is active, this thing just looks incredibly badass. 
Now, starting off then with the roll bonuses here, we get a 100% bonus to large hybrid turret damage, so the four high slots do the damage as if they were eight. We have a 100% bonus to tractor beam range and velocity, so if you want to fit a tractor beam to pull in loot, you can do, but we're going to be using an MTU for that instead. We have a 70% reduction in micro jump drive reactivation delay, which is amazing, and dear lord, I wish I could fit one on this ship. It would do so much better with one of those active, but again, we can and theoretically get around that, as you'll see later on. We then have the typical battleship uh, roll bonuses here. 100% bonus to shield extender hit points, 50% bonus to armor plate hit points, and a 5% additional bonus to reinforced bulkhead hit points. This is not really going to affect the fit that we're using personally here, but it's nice to know it has it. The final one that I did skip over, if you were eagle-eyed, is the Bastion Module Fitting Ability. Now, Bastion Module is a really unique piece of gear, and it's what makes the Marauders Marauders. Without them, they would be worse than the Navy issue versions of the battleships. With them, they become something truly special. The long and short of it, if you want to be skipping ahead, is that a Bastion Module essentially locks the ship in place. You cannot move, you cannot warp, you can't micro-jump drive, you can't do any of that shtick whilst the Bastion Bastion module is active, and it has a 60 second cycle time, which means if you're jumped and you need to warp away, you may have up to 60 seconds before you can do so if they've arrived just as you cycle. That is worth bearing in mind, but the trade-off for this is that you double your amount of repairing, whether that's shield booster or armor repairer, you double the amount of repairing you get from those modules, which is just insanely good. We also halve the turret rate of fire and increase our turret range a little bit as well. It does similar for missiles, but of course we're talking about a turret ship, so we'll focus on that. Getting additional rate of fire, 50% reduction there to the rate of fire means we essentially double Double our DPS, which is just insanely good. We then also get, there it is, optimal range and fall off of 25% to both of those, which is really nice. The other downside worth mentioning is that anything using remote reps on you is going to have those drastically reduced to the point that they are practically effectively useless. Do not bother with them. You do not want uh, like remote reps and remote boosters being applied to you. You are fully reliant on your local repairer, 100% bonus there to armor repairer bonus. Really, really powerful. It used to be as well that the Bastion modules also gave you certain E-War resistances. That was massively dialed backwards during the Viridian update. Um, so you are now susceptible to things like tracking disruption um, and ECM and stuff like that, which you weren't quite as susceptible before. But again, we're a ratting ship. We have ways around that. And if someone jumps you, the Bastion mode's going to kind of hold you in position anyway. Do have friends nearby. If you're going to be ratting in an expensive ship like this, you're going to want to have friends near you who are able to assist in, uh, in an emergency. Going back to the different ship characteristics and traits though, we then have Galente Battleship. You'll need this at 5 to undock this to begin with. That's going to give you a 25% additional bonus to large hybrid turret damage and a 50% bonus to the large hybrid turret fall off. So you're getting a little bit of extra range and damage out of that as well, which is always a good thing. Finally, the Marauder skill. This gives you a 7.5% bonus to armor repairer amount and a 7.5% bonus to large hybrid turret tracking speed. Better tracking means we can hit faster moving targets and the armor repairer amount is going to really help us stay alive. Now, this really does require that you are at Marauder 4 minimum. You're going to need the full 30% armor repairer amount for this. Anything less than uh, Marauder 4 is going to put you in a dangerous position where your tank may not hold during that core garrison, and you don't want that. That's not a good thing. If, like me, you enjoy flying these ships, it's absolutely worthwhile getting that all the way up to the full Marauder 5. It's a long train, I get it, there's a lot of time between Marauder 4 and Marauder 5, but it does give you an additional 7.5% armor repair amount and another 7.5 large hybrid turret tracking speed. It is going to really help the Kronos out here, and it does really well with that. 
Now let's talk about the fit in specific. This is going to be linked down below in the description of the video so you can copy it into Pypha, you can copy it into game and see how it works with your skills. I also need to give a big thank you and a shout out to Ashy from Ashy in Space. This is her fit technically, not technically, it is her fit. I am still sad that her website is down at the moment and I do wish her all the best and hope that eventually she does come back to the EVE community. She did a lot of good for us, she's an awesome person and I thoroughly support her in everything she's been doing. Anyway, that all said and done then, let's talk about the fit. The high slots, first of all, we are going to be using Neutron Blaster Cannon 2s. Oh yes, we're using blasters for this because we want that really high DPS. The tracking is really nice on these as well. The range is a little bit short, but we've got ways that kind of counteract that, which we'll talk about in just a second. So first of all then, using the Neutron Blaster Cannon 2s here, with Void Large, we get an optimal range of 10 kilometers and a fall off range of 28. We can actually hit really quite far out with this, and the way that these work, when you run the math on the damage application in regards to optimal and fall off, etc, etc, ultimately you can use Void on anything that is 25 kilometers or closer. You want to switch to Null L once something is beyond 25 kilometers, and that that's basically not much in these sites. As you'll see, there's a couple of times where you do need to swap to Null, but you really don't need it all that much. Void is pretty much going to sit jammed into those blaster cannons the entire time you're running the site, and that is going to give us a absolutely humongous 2,802.3 DPS. And that's with me at Large Blaster Specialization 3, I think, and no implant active that benefits this. So absolutely, if you are skilled a bit better, into your large blasters, or if you're using implants that are going to be affecting them, that's going to push that way over the 3000 DPS mark, which is truly monstrous. And that's going to hit any of the cruisers that orbit at 15Ks. It'll hit all the battleships and just pound through those quite comfortably. This is an astonishing vessel for the amount of firepower it can put out. But for those frigates that like to orbit up close and personal, we have Imperial Navy Large EMP Smart Bombs. Two of those in the high slots allow us to just nuke through any frigates that happen to orbit. We've only got a 7,500 meter range, but that's fine. Those frigates tend to orbit between six and seven kilometers, so they will be in range of the Smart Bombs and you'll be able to blap those out of existence. Now, I did mention that the range was going to be an issue here. We are using two tracking computer twos, both with optimal range scripts active. I don't even bother to carry a tracking speed script. There is just no real point in it. You track well enough to hit anything you're going to hit. The only thing you can't really hit with this is going to be the frigates, and that's why we have the smart bombs. Even changing to two tracking speed scripts does not allow us to hit the frigates, so just don't bother. Keep it with the optimal range bonus script in there, and just keep Keep that cycling. The final high slot to talk about there obviously is the Bastion module. Um, it, it, it's there, it's a Marauder. Of course we're using the Bastion module, and Marauder without a Bastion module is quite honestly pointless. The other mid slots then are all about cap stability. We've got two Republic Fleet large capacitor batteries and an Imperial Navy cap recharger. This is just to keep us as cap stable as possible whilst running this site so that we don't worry too much about all the neutralizers that are going to be hitting us. And remember, we're looking at this now with all the modules active. For the most part, you will not have the large EMPs active and you are incredibly cap stable without those. 69.1 gigajoules per second of delta there. Very very, very powerful. Continuing cap stability in the low slots, we have two Dark Blood Capacitor Power Relays just to again assist with keeping that up to scratch. For tank, I'm currently running a Corelli A-type multi-spectrum coating. You could theoretically sp uh, swap this out for a reactive. I prefer the Corelli A-type here, and I do agree with Ashy on that. I think that does work out a little bit better across the board because our resistances are fairly close, so there's not a whole ton that a reactive would do. It would try and plug the explosive and ultimately end up in a situation where it works out slightly lower across the board with all of those whilst chewing capacity as well. Not much admittedly, but it's there. 
The two repairers we have are both core X-Type large armor repairers. These are a little bit expensive. They're about 500 million on the market each at the time of me making this, and it's where a lot of the cost of this fit comes from. You can theoretically downgrade these to an A-Type, but you're gonna be wanting to use hard shell at that point in time, which begins to counteract it after a period of time. So I just personally think go for the core X-Type, stick with those and just have a nice solid fit that gets the job done. We then finally have Federation Navy Magnetic Stabilizers, Magnetic Field Stabilizers, sorry for those last two mid slots. That just pushes our DPS up that little bit higher. You'll notice I don't have drones currently fit in this. I've only just spotted that myself. They don't do particularly much. Drones would more be added to this kind of fit for just taking out a sleeper, at, uh, taking out the drifter battleship, sorry, and just to get a little bit of extra DPS on its shield or its armor. So you'd be looking at things. This does have a larger drone megabit per second, drone bandwidth than the other Marauders. So we can actually go up to mediums rather than just light drones. So you're gonna be looking at things like hammerhead twos or possibly some infiltrator twos in there as well um, just to help get through the shield and armor um, respectively shield you want thermal damage armor you want electromagnetic it's a little bit weirder than you know usual but it is what it is again we're not focusing on the drifter in this video so the drones really not necessary i very rarely even launch them because i have a nasty habit of accidentally smart bombing my own drones our two rigs then, the last thing to talk about, are both large capacitor control circuit twos. Again, this is all about just getting that capacitor stability to a point where the incoming neutralization isn't just going to completely flatten us. Ultimately, the more capacity you have, the more like prejudicially you can run all of your modules and just not worry about anything. Shoot, kill, destroy, and yeah, that's pretty much what the Kronos does. And boy, it does it really well, but don't take my word for it. Let's jump into the combat section and showcase this in a C5 core garrison. I'm gonna show you how to get set up with this because of those range concerns. I'm gonna show you how the site works, and then I'm gonna show you how I lost the ship afterwards. So here I'm warping out of the first core garrison site that I've run in this particular C5, and I'm moving on to the second one. I'm de-scanning really quite comfortably here. I have made sure that the holes are being watched for most of this, and I've got one of my armor repairers running at all times. You'll see that the one that is lower than my standard F key prompts um, is the one I keep running. That allows me just to use F4 to toggle on the secondary uh, rem uh, armor repairer. Now I warp into the site here and I warp in at zero. I'm going to drop a mobile tractor unit here, although you don't have to drop it at this point, you can drop it later on. And if you're going to drop it at this point, I do strongly recommend something more like a magpie that has a faster drag-in speed, but you'll see why. Essentially, first thing I do then is immediately right-click on that central thing. I'm going to set, set a warp in point and then we are going to immediately warp back out to my safe point. Everything here is masses of kilometers away. I want things to be within 25Ks, not within 75Ks. Those Orthrus turrets are just going to be awful to try and handle with at this particular range. So we set a warp in point on the structure by right clicking it, save as, save location as, and then calling it something like warp in. You'll see I warp out to my safe. Once I'm there, we turn around, we warp back in on that point at zero. Doing this essentially allows us to ignore the fact that we don't have a micro jump drive. If you could cram an MJD into here, then you're going to be able to just warp to a distance that is much closer using that. But with that warp in point now, you can see those Orthruses are now all within 15 kilometers, which is pretty sweet. So I'm gonna to toggle on the Bastion mode, turned the ship to face the sun so I could get some nice screenshots and better footage. And then we're gonna start locking onto everything ship by ship. And then we're just gonna start pummeling things. We're gonna start with the Orthrus turrets. They do hit pretty hard. They have uh, okay tracking, but you know what? We're parked, so does it really matter? They're going to be hitting us. The thing is, they're simply not any form of trigger, so we can just take out those turrets nice and quickly and easily, and you'll see how fast they go down. Like, damn! That first Orthrus went down really quick, the second one's already gone. We're about to start shooting the third one. The rest of the wave, otherwise, is basically five frigates, emergent sentinels, these scram and web. Neither of those worry us because we're in a bastion mode anyway. We're not going anywhere. Doesn't matter how many scrams or how many webs you've got on us. I can't warp anyway. I can't drift anyway. So sure, web me, scram me, see if I care. 
So I'm just going to basically wait until they're all in seven and a half kilometers, activate both of the Navy EMP smart bombs and shoot them into oblivion that way. Keep an eye on the overview on the right hand side. You'll see they all suddenly disappear in one quick moment. The others are five cruisers, awakened sentinels, again, just webs. Really nothing stressful about these. They orbit at 15 kilometers, um, which is well within our void range. We can hit those quite comfortably. You can see there, there's no issues tracking them, hitting for good amounts of damage and chipping through them quite quickly. They don't really do much back. You could probably swap, uh, turn off one of the armor reppers at this point in time. We're just gonna be shooting those awakened sentinels whilst the EMP smart bombs do their thing against the frigates. Really straightforward, really simple first wave. And if you've watched my other videos on the Varga, the Golem and the Paladin, you'll have already seen, there they go, there go all the frigates. You'll have already seen how much faster this is clearing this first wave. It is a dramatic increase in clear time here with the Kronos. Everyone says that the Kronos is like the black sheep. It's the one that no one really uses for C5 ratting because old blasters aren't great. The range is awful. That one simple warp in was all it took. And suddenly this is clearing the site significantly faster than any other of the marauders that I've taken out first and you know so far essentially the Varga was the best at the time I made that video the golem doesn't do great because those torpedoes application yeah you do a lot of damage but you don't apply much of it to the targets at all so the golem takes a long time to clear the sites the paladin was second on that list that was okay it did a good uh, clear time had some nice ranges and there were some lovely tips in the comment section there about what we could do to improve that so if you are interested in flying the paladin and you want to watch that video check out the comment section down below some great tips from other people in the community really glad that people do that kind of stuff um then i would say the varga would be third that was well second Second on the list, I suppose, second best. Very good clear times courtesy of Hail L and the, uh, the, the auto cannons that we were using. But here, things just die so blooming quickly. It's impossible to, you know, not see this as the fastest clear time. Anyway, we are now in wave two. Wave two is six Emergent Keeper frigates. These remote repair each other and they have neutralizers. The neutralizers aren't exactly great. The remote repairs even worse. They're also the trigger, so we can't kill all six of these instantly. But the remote repair does actually help us. You'll see I've started to smart bomb already. And if you watch the different healths of the six different Emergent Keepers up there, you'll see they all kind of go down fairly equally but then some of them will start repping. And this means you can keep those smart bombs going and you can take off four or five of those emergent keepers really quite quickly. And that allows you to reduce some of the neutralization coming into onto the battleship quite quickly whilst your, uh, whilst your neutron blasters are taking out the sleepless sentinel battleships. There are three of those in this. They scram, they web, and they newt too. The scrams and webs, again, not a problem for us. We're in bastion mode. It is what it is. That neutralization though, is slightly nasty so we do theoretically want to take those out nice and quickly fortunately void l ammunition plus those blasters yeah they're going down quite quickly that first sleep the sentinel despite the fact that i had a reload and then forgot to start firing again for a while is doing pretty well i also love the fact that large blasters have a five second reload that just feels so good and i really wish that my autos reloaded faster but there we go also, I have to chuckle. Someone in corp chat to me while I was filming this, I was talking about the different, like how the armor repair is going, because it does at the beginning of some of these waves go down to lower than 30%, which means it starts screaming at me. Yes, I know you can change the percentage that the klaxons start going off, but I do quite like it that way. Ultimately, it, he likened it to a windscreen wiper and it kind of does your armor shoots all the way right down to 30% and then whoop, suddenly it's all the way back up. So it's like the world's most broken windscreen wiper. It takes a little bit of time to get to the left hand side and then it just goes whoop and wipes it to the right and then it sort of clacks its way back as if it's got grit in the motor or something to the left hand side before blopping back. Now at this point you'll see I am still keeping these smart bombs going, taking out those emergent keepers. One of them definitely has more health than the other, but I do still want to keep an eye on those. Make sure that they are going down differently, like they are very close. And if we get to a point where that's too close, you see I've turned off the two smart bombs right now because I don't want to take both of those out at the same time. Because if I take them out at the same time, I'm going to spawn wave three. And that's going to be a problem when I've still got two sleepless sentinels on the grid as well that are doing a decent whack of damage. 
one of those sleep, uh, sleeper sentinels has just gone down leaving just one left we can take that out now and then as that gets to the bottom of its health pool we trigger those immersion keepers we blow those up with the smart bombs and we go into wave three I'm actually quite proud of how close I got those timings as well. You'll see that the battleship goes down and it's literally, I think, two, maybe three cycles before the Immersion Keeper goes down. You'll see there the Neutron Blasters have gotten firing, but they just simply don't hit. But the MP is more than enough. We now have Wave 3 spawned in and they've spawned in nice and close too. Everything in blaster range isn't that fun. This is going to have three battleships, Sleepless Sentinels, these Scram Web and not uh, neutralize us as we saw before. This time around though, they are the trigger, so we need to not kill all of them. And you can see the windscreen wiper effect going on at the bottom there with my armor tank right now, sort of sitting there 55 odd percent. And then whoop, up it goes. We have three cruisers called Awakened Keepers, these Scram Web and Newt, and we have five Awakened Sentinel cruisers that just web. Now the Awakened Sentinels therefore are just no threat to us at all. I like to take out two of the battleships early on. We can't take all three because we'll trigger the next wave and that would be bad, but essentially we can take out two of those nice and early, reduce the amount of damage that they're dealing to us and get rid of those neutralizers. I then tend to go after the Keepers. The Keepers, again, the fact that they've got the uh, neutralizers there, just getting rid of them early feels like a somewhat decent idea. You'll see I have actually launched some drones here, a um, little bit higgledy-piggledy. I've got hammerheads and infiltrators at the same time, but oh well, who cares? My drone control is awful. You guys point it out to me every time in the comment section. I've just got to remember not to accidentally use my EMP smart bombs, right? As you can see though, this wave is providing no threat to us. We are gradually working our way through the battleships there. I will then take out those keepers at fair pace as well. They'll go down really quite quickly. They don't have all that much health um, and I track them really nicely with the turrets that we're using. It's not a struggle at all. So I tend to go two, of the, two out of the three sleepless sentinels, then the awakened keepers, then the awakened sentinels before finishing off that third and final sleepless sentinel and triggering into the final wave of this anomaly. Fortunately, of course, the final waves of each anomaly have no real kill orders. You don't have to worry about things because there are no triggers. We have two Sleepless Keeper battleships, and these guys are going to be really annoying for us. They're battleships with neutralizers. They warp in at a fairly long range away, about 74 kilometers from the current position you can see here. Technically, everything launches in at that distance. Just everything else moves nice and quickly to get to us. So you'll see I swap to Null just to see if I can shoot some of these off-grid before they they arrive one of those emergent wardens goes down pretty much instantly thanks to the high alpha damage of that um, I then start to get some tracking issues there so that's not gonna work particularly well we can just smart bomb them when they get close as well not a problem at all the awakened sentinels those are essentially just uh, webbing cruisers not a threat the frigates are scram web and newt again not too much of a threat there's only three of them they die really easy to smart bombs as you can see now which is yeah there we are and wow what a beautiful name there for the estero i think i'm gonna probably censor that out that's horrific why would you name your ship that there we go anyway nothing i can do about it if there's an estero hunting me there's an estero hunting me that's just the way it goes it's not like i can warp out right now and the two battleships are slowly drifting towards you can see that by going back to void ammunition using the emp smart bombs we can take out the frigates really quickly and we start to shoot the sentinels really quickly as well um they do go down quite quickly used quickly an awful lot in that last sentence there a lot of that going on <laughs> yeah of course for some reason those awakened sentinels are keeping a little bit further range than i would like 19 kilometers it's not huge but it's enough that it is pushing us further into fall off which reduces the amount of damage they take but there we go off goes the first awakened sentinel second awakened sentinel is now going to start feeling the wrath of my neutron blasters and we're just going to punch that in the face until we are left with just the sleepless keepers this does theoretically bring us to the end of this particular uh, anomaly we've kind of discussed everything here i'm going to let this play out a little bit excuse me dry throat <clears throat> whilst i showcase how null doesn't really do much to these this is where a micro jump drive would be kind of nice although we'd have to switch bastion mode off in order to do it so we're just going to kind of sit here we're going to use null and slowly chip away at these two battleships um, as they approach us fortunately we hit them quite nicely they're in range and the closer they get the more range you know more damage we're going to do drones do not hit that far out but before we get to the hilarity of how i lost this ship 
I just want to show you how amazing the tank on this can be, because the first site I run, I accidentally triggered early and ended up with a whole bunch of ships shooting at me. So let's go take a look at that, shall we? So here we are in wave three of the core garrison, and for some stupid reason, I forgot that there was a wave four. So I'm shooting the sleepless sentinels thinking, oh, I can just kill these and not worry about kill orders. And then suddenly two more battleships, a load of cruisers and frigates suddenly spawned in as well. And I'm like, oh crap, that's a lot of ships. So I start to lock on and I'm thinking those awakened sentinels, they go down fairly quickly and those sleepless keepers are fairly far away. Maybe I'll be okay, but hey, bastion mode means I can't run away even if I wanted to, right? So I'm just going to have to kind of live with this, handle it, and just get on with it. You know, many whelps and all of that. So I'm just going to keep shooting and hope that my tank holds. And spoiler alert, it does. It really does really does. We get a little bit of the windscreen wiper effect going on. I'm 50% of my armor, now I'm 75% of my armor. It's just not that much of a problem. Like, look, I'm not going to suggest that you forget about the trigger orders, because that would be a silly thing to do, but definitely, you know, you might be surprised at how well this thing can tank. Like, it's not ideal, and, you know, you really should be following the trigger order and not letting the uh, waves spawn early like that. But if you are an idiot like me, all hope is not lost. And just before I show you how I lost this ship, let's just spend a brief moment to appreciate how freaking beautiful the Bastion mode is on this as well. How it lights up, how the front wings sort of open up and vent straight into space with that Bastion module coming straight out of the forked sides of the hull there. It is just a beautiful ship. I love the Kronos and how this thing looks, and its Bastion just looks badass. It may not be quite as impressive to me as the Vargas, but it's a close second, I think, with the Golem probably falling into third, and then the Paladin being the most disappointing at fourth. But anyway, I have teased it enough at this point. Let me tell you the story of how I lost this vessel. We are in the fourth wave of the core garrison. I've got those two sleepless keepers, the two awakened sentinels, and two emergent wardens on their way to me. The decloaked transmission relay has already spawned as well, and I haven't noticed one really, really obvious thing about it. It's only five and a bit kilometers away. I then decide that with those emergent wardens nice and close, I should probably start using my smart bombs. And something just appeared on the right side of the screen. Would you look at that? What could that be? Oh. That's the Arithmos Tyrannos Drifter Response Battleship. That's not good. I'm on voice chat talking to my corp at this point in time. In fact, you may have seen D-Scan had one of our guys coming in to do some salvage. And I pointed out the mistake I had just made and how this was probably going to cost me the ship. Because not only do I still have two battleships, a cruiser and a frigate attacking me, I've now got the Drifter Response Battleship. I don't have the proper tank setup with all of the uh, resists to add like incoming energy neutralization to survive this. So I'm kind of expecting that I'm going to just lose this because I'm going to be out capped any second. Maybe, just maybe, I can warp off and then I look at my health and go, no, that's not going to work. Let's just kind of overheat everything and see if I can stay alive long enough to maybe start shooting at the drifter response. And it, you, you can see already I'm taking whole damage. It's just not going to happen. So I'm thinking, okay, at this point, maybe I can move some of the loot back into the mobile tractor unit and get that back later. Am I going to have time to do that? Am I heck? I completely screw the entire thing up. Big shot comes in from the Drifter Response Battleship and pop goes the Kronos. Oh boy. All of that because I tried to smart bomb whilst right next to the decloaked transmission relay. Yeah, respect that thing, kids. Make sure you're keeping an eye on where the decloaked transmission relay spawns. Do not shoot it. Do not hit it with smart bombs. I thought maybe my drones had hit it, and then I realized, no, it's within 5k. I smart bombed it like an absolute numpty. What a way to lose a 3.5 billion isk ship. Fortunately, however, the amount of loot that that thing dropped, I almost paid for the whole thing back. Like, genuinely, I was, I think, 500 million off just buying the fit and everything back again, which felt fantastic. You know, if you're going to lose a ship, at least make sure you lose it in a way that you can recover most of it. 
Anyway, the Frigate Bay Escape, uh, Escape Atron here works really nicely, probably something I'll showcase in another video. I love this little ship to pieces, 7 million isk that has saved my pod so many times and allowed me, like this, to go back and start collecting some of the loot. Later on I do actually just go and grab my Paladin and come in and grab the loot um, and then actually rat some of the site as well, but I just want to leave this running because I want to showcase that actually these things do take a little bit of time to lock onto, so you do have a few moments to try and loot as much stuff as you can here. You can see I'm kind of panicking a little bit because there's a lot of stuff going on, but let's try and loot as much of this, move it into the cargo hold. Yeah, no, let's warp away, come back another time with a better ship. And by the time I come back, the site has actually despawned and the drifter, as you can see actually from the overview already, has moved on to other places. The drifter gets bored and will warp around the C5 anomaly if not killed. Anyway, folks, that's everything for the Kronos. I really enjoyed this ship. Really fun ship. Does a lot of powerful damage. Was great to use it. I was really quite surprised by it, actually, how well it did. I had a lot of fun. Have I gone and bought another Kronos? Yes, I did a load of other footage after this as well, um, and I will actually be using it. The Kronos and the Varga, definitely two ships that I'm really enjoying flying, and that kind of worries me because it pushes me towards being sort of a possible battleship main. Yay, let's not let that happen, shall we? I'm going to be still focusing on the cruisers. Need to think of some more heavy assault cruisers. If anyone's got an Adrestia or any of those kind of the rare heavy assault cruisers and wants to send one my way um, for that content, please do let me know, and I promise I won't do my usual thing of losing it in its maiden voyage. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching right the way through to the end of this one. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden.